Hi everyone, this is Nikki with Design Like a Pro and in this episode I'm going to give you two publication tips that are really going to help you early on in the process of designing your magazines, your booklets, your programs, catalogs, anything that has multiple pages to it, this is going to help you. Now I have two episodes about creating booklets and in InDesign that I will link down below that are also going to help and go a lot more in depth with the actual creation and saving out of a booklet. This is an episode I'm particularly highlighting because it's something I get questions on all the time from people creating their own booklets and publications. So this is going to address two very common troubleshooting issues that should save you a lot of time and heartbreak and frustration in the long run of your projects. So let's dive in. I have InDesign open right here and you can see I've got some blank pages are ready to go for my publication. This is how I work. I like to have all of my pages kind of laid out so I know what I'm working with and what I have left to design. Typical thing here. We're talking a lot about the process of publications in this episode and you're going to get some behind the scenes to how this works as well. And a lot of times people are all about adding pages of content just because the project is changing while you're working on a publication or a book or something of that nature. So sometimes it's rough to get a really good page count early on, but it's super important to have a really good foundation for how pages work in publications to avoid the issue later on of having an uneven page count that doesn't actually complete your booklet and your printer telling you that or you run into the issue that a lot of people do when they print a booklet in InDesign. If we were to look at that, going to print a booklet really quick and we were to preview what we, we currently have and we can see that we have now all of the pages that we need. And one little tip that I address in the other lessons is to make sure that your print blank pages is activated. It's especially vital in this case because all we have are blank pages in our document, but that's going to show you right away where your page count falls. So the issues that you have in this situation here, when you're ready to save out your booklet is what we're addressing today. The tip that I have for you is to make sure that you have the correct page count for your document. Now, what does correct page count mean? Basically, it means that you have enough pages in your document from the front cover to the back cover to create a complete booklet. If you don't have enough pages, InDesign is going to throw up these errors to you and that's what's going on. So we have 24 pages. How do we know if that's correct or not? Well, the tip that I have for you is to come down here right in InDesign and it says how many pages you have and how many spreads you have. The trick is this. You need to have an even number of pages and an odd number of spreads to make sure that you have a complete booklet. Let's see this in action. If I were to just delete two pages, just like that, now we've got 22 pages to our booklet. Okay. And I come down here, I have 22 pages and 12 spreads. All right. Is that going to work? Well, if we come back to our print to booklet, we're going to see right away that this is not going to work because InDesign is going to fill that void with blank page. If you're previewing your document and you see blank pages in this preview section right here, you know that you have some issues and you need to fill it with two pages because you can see a blank page here and a blank page here. InDesign is going to help you with that, but that's what this means. You do not have enough pages in your document to create a booklet. Now at the core, there's an, there's another way to look at this. And, and that's if I come back here and just delete all of these pages and start with one page. And this is very elementary beginner. If you've never created a booklet in your life, this is super helpful information as to why we end up with an even page count and an odd number of spreads to complete any booklet. We know that we're going to have a front cover and we know that we're going to have a back cover. And because of that and the way that booklets work, we know that we're going to have an inside to the front cover and an inside to the back cover. This creates a spread. So a spread is two pages on the front and two pages on the back. And then you fold those in half and now you have your booklet, right? That's essentially one giant 
piece of paper folded in half, but in booklet land, we call that four pages because you are folding it and you've got a front and inside, another inside and a back, right? So at the very minimum, you are working with four pages. In essence, this is all math. We know that our booklets at the core are gonna have four pages minimum. When you're adding pages to your magazine, it's not about adding a single page anymore. You can't just say, oh, I need a page and now I've got five pages to my publication, right? Again, following the rule here, we now have an odd number of pages and an odd number of spreads. So that's not going to work. Adding another page even isn't going to work. And you may think that it is going to work, because you have an out, you know, your covers the way that it's set up here, InDesign, then it looks fine. It looks like it should work. But when you really look at your window here and realize that your back cover comes up here, then these two, four pages envisioning your back cover, that makes a spread. We're hanging here. We've got two pages for maybe a front or a back, but we don't have the other set. So we know that we need to have at least two more. Now we have a front and back cover with the insides, and then we have another spread here that goes together. So there's multiple ways of looking at this, as is usual with anything design, but I've showed you a couple of ways to double check your work here and make sure that you're using the right page count. If we go back up to our 24 pages, then we'll dive into the next tip that I have for you, and that is when your printer calls you and says that you don't have enough pages to fit their signature. What does that mean? Signatures is basically made up of four, eight, or 16 pages typically. And this is the way that printers increase your publication count. So as much as people will say in your group that we gotta add a page, and now you know that a page, adding a page technically means adding four minimum, Printers typically work in signatures of eight or 16. Occasionally they will work with four for not usually in magazine land, but if you're doing publications or catalogs or booklets, playbills, things like that, you, you could get away with just adding four. It depends on your printer and it depends on a, a bunch of other factors. But when you're working specifically with magazines, they usually work in eight page signatures to 16 page signatures. So that means that your page counts need to go in eight page increments. We have a 24 pager right here. If we wanna add pages, we have to add eight pages in that term. So that means that our 24 page magazine is now a 32 page magazine. And if we want to go even further, then our 32 page magazine is gonna become a 40 page magazine, okay? And that's where printers typically fall. And the reason for that, a lot of it is cost. It's just more cost effective to increase your publication by eight instead of four pages. You get a lot of price breaks when you do that. When you're working on these projects, it's really helpful to know this. So if you're talking to people at the table about your project, you can tell them, hey, we gotta increase this by at least eight. So we need to know what our content is in advance. Again, remember, you need to have an even number of pages and an odd number of spreads. And if you're going to increase your page count of any publication you're working on, the very minimum that you will be increasing that by is four. But depending on the project, you may be looking at increasing that by a signature of eight and sometimes 16, depending on your project. If you have any comments, please leave them below. I do read every comment that comes through and try to respond to as many as possible. If you haven't already, please subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and greatest here at Design Like a Pro. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.